What's up guys? I got the chance to play the Division beta this last weekend, and I wanted to give an honest opinion of the game based on what I've played for anybody who's wondering if they should pick it up or not. Personally, I could see myself spending lots of hours on this game. It's a massive world to go explore and loot, and overall I'd say it's pretty awesome. I'd see myself spending the majority of time in the Dark Zone, but we'll get to that in a little bit. Looking at the progression system of the game, you'll notice there are two different ranking systems for your character. One is called your level, and the other one is actually called your rank. Your level is going to be for everything that has to do with story missions, side missions, and getting your base of operations up and running at maximum efficiency. To do that, you're going to have to collect supplies by doing encounters all over the city marked by the different wings in your base of operations. And these are called the tech wing, the medical wing, and the security wing. Now your rank is directly linked to the PvP area of the game called the Dark Zone. And you rank up there by finding and extracting loot and killing both AI targets and rogue agents wandering the Dark Zone. At every entrance to the Dark Zone there are vendors who sell weapons and armor that are slightly better than your gear for the most part. And you can equip those before you go out into the wild. And that brings me to my next point. There are two different types of in-game currency as well. Again, one for the PvE side of the game, which are the orange credits, and as you'll see here, the purple credits are reserved for buying from the Dark Zone vendors. Now, this is very important. Notice how you have to be both a certain level in PvE and a certain level in PvP to buy from these Dark Zone vendors. I thought this was very interesting. It seems that if you want to buy the best weapons in the game, you're going to have to put considerable time into the campaign part of the game in order to have a high enough level needed to purchase them. Now the weapons and armor are all broken down in different categories with green being the weakest and then blue, purple, and yellow weapons getting progressively stronger. In the beta I was able to get my hands on the best weapon available. In the dark zone there is a safe room where you can go to restock and buy high-end weapons and that is where I bought the Caduceus auto rifle or assault rifle rather, which was definitely the most powerful primary in the beta. It felt really good to use and also hit pretty hard against even the highest rank enemies in the game. Now here you'll see a clip where I was in the dark zone and I attempted to attack some rogue agents. If you fire on a non-hostile agent in the dark zone, you will become a rogue agent for a small amount of time. If you are shot or shoot anybody else, the timer will be extended. And the only way to get rid of your rogue status is to stay alive until the timer runs out or until you die at the hands of another agent. So you really want to be sure that somebody has something good before you start shooting at them. When you kill a rogue agent, you are given an extremely large amount of experience. So the bounty on their head is one that everyone will flock towards. That is why I would recommend going into the dark zone with a squad of friends so you can survive against anyone who wants to bully you for your loot. And here you'll see this group of rogue agents. Everyone is rushing them to try and get that sweet loot and experience boost. Multiple squads can work together, as you see here, to try and take down the common enemy. Now, let me show you some of the abilities in the beta that everybody used. You can have up to two abilities equipped at any time on your character, and each ability can be modded or upgraded five times. Now, modded abilities weren't unlocked in the beta, so these are just the base abilities in this clip. I was using a healing ability and a grenade launcher ability. Once used, they have a small cooldown that can be affected by how much skill power you have equipped on your character. The healing ability doesn't restore all of your health, it only restores a portion of it. If you want to get a full health regeneration, you will need to use a med kit, which is a very limited resource in the world. The cool thing about this ability is that you can shoot it at a teammate and it will begin to restore their health. If a friend is in trouble, you can totally use this to bring their health back up and keep your squad going. And the grenade launcher ability is pretty awesome in my opinion. It fires a Semtex grenade at any surface and it just sits there until you decide to detonate it. So if you're in a firefight, you can just uh, place this in an area of cover and if they end up moving up, you can detonate it and totally catch them off guard and take away a significant portion of their health. I personally think it's a pretty handy ability and I can't wait to see what kind of mods you can put on it in the, in the future release of the game. Now as you hear, see here, strength in numbers is the key to success in the Dark Zone. They slowly ended up picking us off and in the end we all die. 
I think that's about it though guys uh, there was still a lot of stuff I didn't put in this video that was in the beta and tons more will be available in the release of the game I personally think this is going to be a very solid game that will get lots of time played from myself and I definitely would recommend it if you are a fan of tactical shooters like Rainbow Six or Counter-Strike and even if you played some SOCOM back in the day it feels very much like the old SOCOM games it's a ton of fun but anyways thanks for watching guys I hope you found this video useful and I will see you later on another video